Um, you know, not forcing myself to rely on one aspect of my game to do it. Um, just getting to a point where I was getting in a good routine physically to come out and just be totally reactionary and go out there and play some ball. Um, and again, I, I really do attribute that a lot to, you know, the staff behind the scenes, uh, both the medical staff and the, the strength and conditioning staff. You know, all those days where the team was, you know, doing their thing on the road and we were just in Yankee Stadium, you know, those those early mornings were all for a reason. So, um, yeah, it's a team effort, and I'm just happy that we're, uh, you know, delivering in a positive way. Uh, Randy up here. Now that you guys have won an elimination game on the road, you go back home. Uh, do you feel like you guys are in the driver's seat being at Yankee Stadium night like game there for game five? <clears throat> yeah, you know, with this staff, um, Defensively, offensively, um, you know, if there's a game being played, we feel as though we're in the driver's seat. Um, and that's how we remain dangerous. Um, I don't think we want it any other way to return back to the Bronx. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're just excited about the energy that we got moving forward. And listen, tomorrow's a new day. We're just going to go out there and play our, play our best baseball. That's all there is to it. Um, the third row on your right, Harrison, and then Anthony. Um, two things. One, just a clarification on what you were saying to Meredith. When in the dugout did Cole say that, like beginning of the game at a certain like inning or anything? It was towards the end of the game. Okay. Um, and then he also mentioned when he was in here just now that you got the belt um, for the best player in the game. Um, what does it mean to you to have been embraced so much and so quickly by this team? Yeah, it means a lot. Um, you know, I've said it. I've said it multiple times. A lot of things can happen when you get traded. Um, just being totally honest, there are a lot of organizations that are not like the New York Yankees. And what I mean by that is just the standard that the players hold themselves to day in and day out. Um, the staff that's surrounded by the players. It's it's just such a winning culture. It's a winning mentality. The fans, the level of expectation um, they have is high and. I wouldn't want it in any other way. I don't want to talk for anybody in the clubhouse, but I'm sure they wouldn't want it any other way either. So to be plunged into a clubhouse like that, uh, I'm just tremendously grateful and fortunate for the opportunity. Um, and every day I wake up, it feels good to be a Yankee. And I, I carry that with me to the field. I carry that in my preparation. And I'm just happy that, you know, we're playing winning baseball and we got a chance to to play more winning baseball tomorrow. So um, these guys are awesome. They, they have been since day one. But that's also, you know, no surprise to me, knowing the names that um, we have in there prior to, you know, obviously knowing I was getting traded. So I was excited. Um, and, yeah, just it's been a lot of fun. Towards the back on your right, Anthony. Harrison, when you when you hit three home runs in four games, is, is there any part of you that feels like um, that's part of your swing or are you just trying to hit the ball hard? I mean, when you hit a home run, are you meaning to or is it just you really hit the ball well? I mean, I like to think I have it in my swing. <laughs> No, nah, I mean, you don't, you don't try to do anything. Um, the only thing you really try to do is just game plan properly. Um, but, what, you know, once the game starts, anytime you f try to force an action, um, you know, I've found that it doesn't really work well. Um, you, can, you know, for me, I, you get fast, you get sped up. And, you know, in a game where, you know, there's just a lot of emotion behind every pitch, um, the only way to do it, in my opinion, is to slow it down. So, you know, the game slows down, and it's, uh, it's a lot easier to execute your approach and what you're trying to do. So, you know, I know that, the, you know, I don't, I don't focus on those numbers. I just, you know, the next opportunity, you get a chance to go up there and swing the bat. You just you look to do damage in the zone that you're looking for. So tomorrow's a new day with a new pitcher and a new arm. So we'll game plan accordingly. Just do a handful more. Uh, Ian standing on your right. Just given your childhood loyalties, how does the dream of hitting October home runs for the Yankees match up with the reality of actually doing it? I think they're both, yeah, I mean, I mean, you definitely visualize it and you have a dream about it. Um, but, you know, again, I, yeah, I mean, yes, I was, I was obviously a Yankees fan growing up, but, you know, my, my dream has always been to just play Major League Baseball. Um, you know, I focus solely on the things I can control day in and day out. And one of those things that is not in my control is how I moved as a piece, you know, especially at this level. So I just view, you know, being traded here very serendipitously, and um, I just look to take, you know, advantage of it every single day. So it, it's definitely sweet, but you know, again, it's I, I'm I'm here to play ball. I, I'm here to, you know, I'm here to win. Um, 
but but to be able to do it in a Yankees uniform is definitely sweet. There's no doubt about it. But that wouldn't change, you know, regardless of the circumstances or regardless of the uniform. One other thing Bader touched on is sort of the path back to getting to this point that he can impact the Yankees in the playoffs. And just think how good it must make him feel. He shows up in a walking boot. Finally, the training wheels or the boot is off. Yeah. And he can have an impact after sitting around for 30 or more days because he couldn't help them. Well, they get traded from one of the greatest organizations, the St. Louis Cardinals and their fan base, to an arguably better situation here in New York. And he's from New York. But he got traded with the reputation of being a defensive center fielder an outstanding defender. He's hitting in this lineup. He was hitting ninth in game one, hitting seventh in game four. And I don't want to say this, that he's an afterthought, but when you're game planning, it's Rizzo, it's Judge, it's Stanton, it's Torres, and Bader becomes a very dangerous guy because right now he's a hot hitter, right? He found something, hasn't had a whole lot of at-bats. He could ride that all the way through this postseason. Right, he jumped Quantrill early in the count, and he's a batter who had had success against him. That was actually his third homer in six at-bats against Against the pitcher and I think when you listen to him talk about the way that he plays he talks about slowing the game town he talked about one baseball moment to the next that's what Garrett Cole told him and when he was asked about visualizing playing for the Yankees he said well he just visualized getting to the major leagues John to your point the Yankees visualized him having a great impact defensively running the bases very well wreaking havoc on the field Michael this is a, a fringe benefit the fact that in 14 plate appearances he's got three home runs it's been amazing uh, also you could see when he uses words like serendipitously the Horace Mann education has really kicked <laughs> in and all I could think of is Yankee fans when that trade was made their hair was on fire. Yeah, wow. Oh, my God, how awful it was. And now the hair is like Jack's. <laughs> they should be would so you, lucky. Would you, would you please show up for the pregame with your hair like that? Sure, tomorrow? I'll keep it like this and I'll talk like Cole. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> oh, man, we're going to take uh, a break.